This is Amy Sermon with Max Knowledge, and I'm speaking again with Dr. Michelle Ernst, Chief Academic Officer of Globe Education Network, which Globe University is a part of. Michelle, thank you again so much for joining us. Absolutely glad to be here. We're going to be talking uh, further about accreditation, national versus regional. Let's talk um, a bit about trends. Uh, you had mentioned your, your dissertation in, in part one. National accreditation has been the trend for many colleges. Is there a trend toward regional? Certainly. Um, when I was doing my research five years ago, and that's when I finished in 2005, my research showed that about 30% of the schools that were currently nationally accredited were considering moving to regional accreditation or were in the process of moving to regional accreditation. So certainly it's a trend that's been happening um, with more nationally accredited career colleges moving to regional accreditation. You talked a bit about this in part one. Can you, um, can you tell us about why that's happening? Well, I think there's several reasons. One is the transferability of credit, the idea that uh, Credits from a particular institution will transfer more easily if the school is regionally accredited. Many of the schools that have moved to regional accreditation have found that it may make it a, a, a little easier, but they're still struggling with that. Another reason is the prestige factor, the idea that schools are more, are more prestigious if they have regional accreditation. Um, a lot of that comes from being able to compare yourself with another um, maybe nationally recognized institution or state institution. So to, to be able to say we're accredited by the same organization as the University of Minnesota or something like that. I think there's also a very practical reason that some schools have considered moving to regional accreditation and that's because of the state rules in some states. For example, in the state of Texas, if you were nationally accredited career college, you could not offer baccalaureate degrees. The state of Texas has since changed that, but for if you were if you had several schools within Texas, that would certainly be a monetary reason to move to regional accreditation. Sure. Uh, how about let's talk a, a bit about dual status, um, national and regional, and, and um, maintaining both status. Can you talk a little bit about that and the importance, or, or your perspective on it? You bet. I think it's a significant challenge for institutions. First and foremost, there's the monetary reason. You're paying for both regional accreditation and national accreditation, which can be very costly. You're paying for the accreditation visits and a variety of other things. I actually did a case study as part of my dissertation on one career college that attempted to maintain both accreditations at the same time, national and regional, and after a few years simply had to drop the national accreditation because they found at times the criteria were in conflict. They would do one thing one way to meet one accreditation body standards and then would have to change it to meet another accreditation body standards, and it was just extremely difficult sure. to, to try and please that many people. Mm. Really interesting. Michelle, any last thoughts that you can share with us? Um, it's, it's obvious you have a, a very strong expertise on the topic. We'd love to hear uh, additional perspectives you have. Well, I, I think a few years back when the Spellings Commission came out with their report on higher education accreditation, they said a lot of interesting things. And I think because of that report and some of the other things that the Obama administration is doing that we're going to see some changes in accreditation. One of the things that Spelling Commission pointed out was that regional accreditation doesn't have as many outcomes, measurable outcomes, as national accreditation agencies do. For example, placement rates, retention uh, were two indicators. And for regional accreditation, it's up to the ins institution to define how they calculate their retention and their placement, whereas for nationally accredited career colleges, the accreditation agency determines that. So that's a significant difference in how those two types of accreditation agencies operate. And because of that, I, I think we're going to see some similarities come about between the two accreditation types, and you're not going to see as many differences. At least that's my prediction in the next several years. Very interesting. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. We, we very much appreciate your insight. We hope you can join us again. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine.